An EcoShell 1 is a concrete thin shell dome whose construction process includes a relatively new technique called air forming. This technique uses an air form that's made of high strength, high tech fabric. When inflated, the air form looking like a semi rigid balloon creates the EcoShell's dome shape. The air form used in the construction of an EcoShell 1 is removable and reusable. With proper care, it can be used 100 or more times, and that feature significantly lessens construction costs for projects involving more than one structure. For an EcoShell 1, concrete is layered onto the exterior of the inflated air form. Usually, the shell is not insulated, but can be by including polystyrene beads, vermiculite, or perlite into some of the concrete as it's applied. This insulation and the thermal mass of the concrete does provide some thermal protection. The EcoShell 1 is a super strong structure that can withstand hurricanes, tornadoes, earthquakes, fire, termites, and rot. Notice that there is nothing spectacular about the foundation for one of the EcoShells. In general, the slab floor will carry the EcoShell. The reason we go down around the perimeter is to keep skunks and other animals from burrowing under the building. Remember, the shell is extremely strong, so it does not need a massive foundation. The foundation and floor can be made minimal if the ground is good. If the ground is not good, then use a 4-inch floor. Otherwise, use a 2 or a 2.5-inch floor but be sure to put the reinforcing in both ways as it ensures the life of the structure. If it will be wet, use basalt rebar. Pouring the floor is as complex or as simple as you can make it. Here they are wanting the floor poured in and around and under an existing structure that they will then remove just before they inflate the EcoShell air form. As can be seen, the cement rebar and the aggregate can be piled very close. With the men working very carefully, they can build a structure using amazing precision. The scaffolding in this case is bamboo, which is native to many of the countries in the developing world. The scaffolding can be built before or after the dome is inflated. Note that the air form is being moved onto the floor. Also note the small piles of sand that are used to seal the air form to the floor. Also shown are some of the braces to hold the air form down. The generator need not be very large. Its job is to keep the inflator running. It must be tended in order to make sure it doesn't run out of fuel. Running out of fuel at the wrong time is a real mess. Shown here are two different brands and types of inflator fans. It takes six to eight inches of air pressure to do the job properly. As can be seen, these fans do not have to be very big. These are fans generally used as vacuum fans in car washes. Shown is the air form being inflated. It is still just barely being lifted by the fans. It will take 20 minutes to one hour depending on the size of the inflator fans. The rebar reinforcing is applied next. As it can be seen here, the vertical rebar is first in place and then the horizontal rebar. The rebar can be steel, fiberglass, or basalt. There are advantages to each. For the EcoShell 1, we recommend basalt or fiberglass. This shows a complex forming around the door of a home. As can be seen, there are window spaces being left open. The domes shown here are being built in Ethiopia for housing and clinics. As you can see, there is no magic. Just simply get people out that are willing to work and get started. Shown here are burlap bags laid over the freshly applied concrete and kept wet to enhance the curing of the concrete. 
This shows the shelf overhang over the inset windows. It is very simple to form and make. These can be very nice, complementary construction details to enhance the domes. Time for the family with dome completed to make it a home. The pictures lie. This one makes it look like the entry cover is larger than the building. The dome is in fact much larger. The eco shells shown here are 32 foot in diameter and 26 foot tall. Most of them house six apartments of about 40 square meters. These make very luxurious apartments. This village is being built by a software company in Hyderabad, India. These domes are shown with three floors inside with two apartments per floor. The buildings are five foot apart to preserve the land. Eco shells come in many finishes and sizes. These are being built by Solid House Foundation. After the tsunami knocked out the housing in Sri Lanka, the eco shells were built to replace it. These are also being built by Solid House Foundation. Notice that on this particular eco shell they put a water catcher. In some places this is going to be good. The water catcher can also be put at ground level which would collect a little more water and it doesn't have the risk of leaking into the house. Again, the rebuilding in Sri Lanka by Solid House Foundation. Here are some eco shells done in Kenya. These are medical clinic buildings. They are 40 feet in diameter, which translates to 1,200 plus square feet. More about them are written on www.monolithic.com. It was an NGO, non-government organization out of Australia that headed up this project. This is a village built in Indonesia after an earthquake took out their first village. There are approximately 100 domes here. More about them are written on www.dftw.org. All of these have been built all by hand by locals with two trainers. Besides the homes, there is a school, clinic, and church. You will notice that the buildings are clustered together. In this country, they prefer communal bathrooms. So 12 houses would have one MCK. An MCK is a dome, same size as a house. It is for bathrooms for men on one side and women on the other side and laundry washrooms in the middle. This is a playground for the project in Indonesia. More domes are still being built by some of those locals that were trained during the initial construction. This is truly a teach a man how to fish endeavor. The buildings have also been smacked by another earthquake doing zero damage. <laughs> 